This is One on One. Stephen Ollendorf is the founder of the Ollendorf Center. I want to thank you for joining us. It's our Appreciate pleasure. It. Thank you for inviting me. Thank our mutual friend, Angelica Bar Barry, for bringing right. us together. Um, Stephen, the Ollendorf Center is? It's a foundation that was really based on a life experience, the genesis of life experience that we had. My mother, my father, and I are Holocaust refugees. We escaped the day after Kristallnacht through the fact that a landlord warned my parents that they were going to raid the apartment. And the fact that after Kristallnacht, my maternal grandmother was able to get us to England on a plane flight that day. And if it wasn't for that intervention, we wouldn't be alive today. So that was one aspect of our life. The other aspect of our life was my paternal grandparents all died, and their family all died in the Holocaust for decisions that they made, which was contrary. They, my grandfather was a colonel in World War I. He didn't believe he'd ever be arrested. And the net result is they all put themselves in peril. And my grandmother, my maternal grandmother on her way to concentration camp wrote a farewell letter mm. to my father. He received it 44 years later in the mail from South America. That's the first time he saw it when he was 79 years old. It was a very private letter. And we read it at his funeral. Rabbi Jack Bemper, who you know. Mm. We read it at his funeral. And the impact was so great. I said to myself at that point, we'll form the Ollendorf Center. We're going to publicize this letter so people understand what history is about, understand the impact of decisions, and we don't want to make it a commercial enterprise. And that was the genesis of it, so we published the book, and we did a DVD describing how two parts of a family made different decisions and how it impacted people's lives probably for generations. And Stephen, we were talking about the book is called Fate Did Not Let Me Go, A Mother's Farewell Letter. The video you're about to see is of the same name. It is narrated by Martin Sheen, and the letter is read by... Lee Volman. It's powerful stuff. Let's take a look. Rothenburg. Dated the 24th day of August, 1942. My beloved, my good boy. Within two days, we are going away from here, and the future lies so dark in front of us that the thoughts comes up that the new place will be the last one which we reach on our migration. And if you, my boy, will hold this letter in your hands, then we are not chased from place to place. Then all the suffering and restlessness will have come to an end. Peace will then be around us and in us. Um, <clears throat> how much do you worry, Stephen, that um, too many of us forget? It's a major concern in the sense that if you look at the statistics, like in America, before World War II there were five million Jews. One million, two hundred thousand Jews immigrated as a result to America. We have less than five million Jews today. We have a 50 percent at the marriage rate. And one of my goals is I don't want Hitler to win the war by, as a result of indifference mm. or lack of knowledge. And that's why we've made these books available and the DVD to every institution that required, wants it, every library, every school, every church, every synagogue. They can contact us. They will get it for free plus some of the other materials we do. Stay right there. If people log on, as you can see the .org, org makes it clear. We're talking about a nonprofit organization, an educational organization. You start at this center because you have a very clear mission. For those who say, hey, it's a long time ago. We don't need to make such a big deal about it. You say. I say, look what's going on in the world today. Um, in fact, even I think I briefly discussed it. Today we're starting a new project. We're doing the Diary of Anne Frank right. with Jewish and Arab actors in Israel in Arabic for distribution in the Arab countries. It is being done by the producer of Schindler's List and the gladiators, Boris Lustig. And it's again a drive so people do not forget. I never thought in my lifetime 
that people would deny the Holocaust. I mean, I expected a lot of strange things. That was not one of them. But, but you know, it's, I want to make it clear that the center produces documentaries and educational material. Some deny it. Some say, yes, but, okay, we're done talking about it. I'm always amazed at that because I'm wondering, and those people are not Jewish very often. I mean, they're not. Right. For someone like yourself to have gone through what you've gone through, and, and, and your father's family, many of them, died in Nazi concentration camps, when you hear that, I mean, is, how much of it is a visceral reaction for you, as opposed to, listen, all right, fine, we need to do educational outreach, as opposed, isn't it very emotional for you? Well, my, my, my one uncle actually was in the underground, died in concentration here trying to escape, but it, it gives me a view of history. For example, think of all the soldiers that fought inch for inch in battlegrounds, and the leaders get together and they call the countries <laughs> by maps of hundreds and thousands of miles. Right. That's the irony of history when you think that, I mean, that's why fate shows the impact on an individual family. But when you look at history and how, what people sacrifice, and, and then it's almost irrelevant at times the way the, the process works. Mm. Well, the Ollendorf Center also is very focused on bringing t people together, which is why the Menorah Project is so special. Tell right. everyone what that is. And by the way, log on to the website. You can find out more about the Menorah Project. Go ahead, Steve. The Menorah Project is a very special project uh, because the root of anti-Semitism, to some degree, was the Jews were responsible for the death of Christ. The Second Vatican Council, Nostra Aetate, in 1965, under John Paul XXIII, said, no, the Jews are not responsible for the death of Christ. I thought if you break the major premise. That was important right there. Right. If you break the major premise that anti-Semitism is not valid, that's important. And then what happened is Russ and Angelica Berry formed this foundation called the Center for Interreligious Understanding, yes. run by Jack Bemperod, of which I was the president and director for many years. And one of the things we were able to do is John Paul II, who was very desirous of uniting all the religions, actually had us, permitted us to put a Holocaust menorah, a big one, on Vatican grounds. And I had the privilege from that picture of presenting a replica menorah to John Paul II. To me, it represented a major step. Sure. But more interestingly, we put 14 other major menorahs on church grounds, mm. universities mm. like Seton Hall University, sure. St. John's the Divine, sure. in Jerusalem, in Croatia, in Poland. And it's amazing that churches would accept this as an annual reminder. They see it physically. I'm sorry for cutting you off, That's but right. we're running out of time. But this is Stephen Ollendorf, founder of the Ollendorf Center. We've been pushing that website. Go there. It is a great organization doing important work. Stephen, we'll come back another time. We'll keep going with the conversation. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Medical Center, Berkeley College, TD Bank, Qualcare Inc., a local managed care company covering 750,000 New Jersey residents, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Verizon Communications, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.